Jenny, I, I'm sorry. Don't. Love means never having to say you're sorry. Love means never having to say you're sorry, but marriage might mean you should every once in a while. Not that I'm a marriage counselor or anything. Uh, I just think that's how it works. Joining me now, Dr. Oren Amate, registered psychologist, docamate.com. So um, a piece of research came out that said if you watch uh, romantic movies and discuss could make your marriage better. I think you were initially suspicious. Yes, because originally I thought it was just a correlational study saying that couples who do this tend to, you know, be less likely to break up. And I was just going to say, well, if you have a couple that is inclined to watch movies together and, you know, spend time together and talk. and talk, then they're less likely to do it. But this was an actual experiment where 185 people were put in one of four groups. Control group, a movie group, and then two types of treatment groups. And they looked at their outcomes over three years. Okay. And um, all three of the treatment groups, including the movie group, uh, they only had an 11% overall separation rate or divorce rate, whereas the uh, control group had a 24% rate. So it showed that this just watching movies four times uh, over a month uh, and talking about it. Once a week. It, you once watch a week. Movie. Yeah, you watch a movie and talk about it, asking certain questions and discussing it was just as effective as these other types of uh, therapies. Okay, RoboCop's out. Uh, <laughs> is that the, uh, this, maybe that's not what you're talking about. No, it's got to be a, a, a movie that has uh, like a relationship aspect because that allows the couple to then look at their own relationship through the uh, you know the fictional characters and to see what is similar to what we do. What, you know, what do I do wrong? What did I mean to do? Why did I say that? And it's it's always easier to be able to address your own issues when you're doing it through somebody else, an outside source. It kind of lowers your defenses and allows you to be more susceptible or more willing to hear what the other person has to say and to be more willing to look at yourself. Do you think that maybe the discussion starts between the couple and well that guy did this or that guy did that and maybe after a bit it dawns on you that you're acting the same way but it's not as personal it doesn't seem like an attack on the other individual exactly it's, it's a nice first step to bridge the gap into the difficult discussion about okay how does this relate to us so it doesn't have to be a movie about a couple where everything went well. No, definitely not. I mean, I think uh, the movies that have conflict or tension would be good because you can see how they dealt with it well uh, or not. And you can, again, especially with the knots, you can see if there's something that you do yourself. It's better if the person themselves says, wow, I know that I do that sometimes and I really don't mean to, versus if someone says, you see, you do this, 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 and that. That's just more finger pointing as opposed to reflection. We played a clip there from Love Story. That's right. a movie from a long time ago. Uh, who was picking out the movies? Did they just go to, the, to movies and discuss, or did they have a list? Well, they had a list, and um, they, they had to think about 47 movies. Okay. And uh, the, the um, researchers now have a list of about 100 other movies that they uh, recommend, all of which, I mean, a lot of them are you know, rom-coms or chick flicks, but a lot of them are serious dr movies. Which, once again, there's a key element of a, a serious relationship in it. All right. Well, then intelligent adults could probably figure that out in terms of putting movies together. How would people access that list? Um, they have a website. Uh, if I can remember it, I'd tell you. Um, okay. If you can Google it, if you Google chick flicks can save movie, uh, save your marriage. You'll find it. You should be able to find it. Yeah, and they have the whole yeah. list of uh, these suggested movies and the questions to ask. Well, I think you're probably on the right track if you just decide to do this. Just to say, this would be good for our relationship. Let's do it. Yeah, you know, and, and even with the results themselves, the fact is they, they went to 800 and some odd couples and right. they only narrowed down to 185 that uh, made it to that stage of the study. So these people are already motivated and they were newlyweds. They're all within a one year um, okay. uh, period. They've been newlyweds. So you have to be motivated and you have to be willing to say, you know what? I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Uh, our, our marriage doesn't have to be in distress, but if there's anything that can be fixed uh, or improved, I'm willing to do it. And if there isn't, you'll enjoy the movie. There you go. Well, you hope. Okay. Chick flicks. Dr. Amate. <laughs> okay. Now, now maybe you'll have trouble. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Amate will stick around and we'll talk about some other research that has to do with kids and violent video games coming up on Straight Talk. Dr. Warren Amate is here. Now, another study that came out, excuse me, <coughs> had to do that. Another study that came out uh, says that violent video games can make kids morally immature. What does that mean? Well, it means that if 
Now, not all kids. Most kids can play video games for a certain period of time and not have their moral sensibilities uh, corrupted or stunted. But if a, if a child is spending too much time uh, within this, you know, this, this non-reality, their reality is violence, it's lack of morals and so on, they don't go through the normal process of developing a sense of right and wrong, a sense of empathy for other people, perspective taking. Because if the only people that you're uh, ever communicating with are people over, you know, headsets and the whole, whole goal is to wipe out a village, you know, you're not uh, you're not building a sense of uh, moral values or sense of right or wrong that we normally develop through our social interactions, our face-to-face -face social interactions. Now, this is not just because somebody, especially a young person, plays what would be a violent video game, just no. because they sit down and play through the game for some period of time. You have to really spend a lot of time on it. Well, you have to spend a lot of time on it, or certain people have a certain predisposition to being easily influenced. If they don't have proper structures at home, if they don't, if they've never really learned the right way to live a, a proper life among other people, even if they are among other people, but they haven't actually uh, had proper models showing them how to relate to other people, how to be kind, compassionate, and so on, then exposure to these games can make them more likely, you know, it can exacerbate any of the negative traits that they normally would uh, have beforehand, like they have a predisposition to it. Right. But most of the people that we're seeing today, um, they might come from a normal background, normal home, but they're spending far too much time immersed in the games for hours and hours, and they're basically programming themselves to you know to, to see this as a normal reaction you see someone there you don't think about who they are you don't think about uh, their perspective or not hurting them you just automatically do something wrong and you'd be more inclined to do something like that in real well, life does that mean they become like a school shooter or that kind of person or does it mean they just become socially dysfunctional I would say most people would be socially dysfunctional. It would only be the far end of the spectrum who might go as far as uh, being a school shooter. So but there must be something wrong with them to start with. Normally there would be something wrong. It's an interaction yeah. of the environment and what they bring to the environment themselves. But with this whole idiotic uh, trend, this knockout game, this horrific game you know, where people are more likely to you know, just sucker punch somebody that's on the street. That's a real life thing. That's, that's not a, a video game. No, but the people who are willing to do that, uh, that's... That's a few degrees lower than a school shooter, but most people would normally not do that. If, however, yes. you spent all your time not interacting with other people, and that you know that physical violence or shooting other people is your norm through these video games, you're far more likely to do that in that moment without thinking about what is the impact on this person I'm striking. Yeah, but a kid that acts normally with other kids is involved in uh, extracurricular activities, all that kind of stuff, and spends a half an hour playing a video game right. is not going off the rails. In most cases, they would not. All no, right. Definitely not. Always good to see you. Have a good weekend. Thank you very much. You too. Thank <laughs> you.